Would you say, the Lord has not given me, the Lord has not given me a, spirit of fear, a spirit of fear, but of love, but of love power, power, and a sound mind. And, sound mind. and you know, we uh, apply our sound mind when we hear things to come. You know, sometimes the things to come may scare you. It may be scary when you think of the coming of the Lord and all of the stories that you've heard around that and what's happening now. It may cause you to feel a bit scared, but God has not given us a spirit of fear. And just that, that like that little girl, Haley, overcame her fear by trusting that word and putting that word in her heart so you and I can be fearless in these last days amen say i am fearless there's no fear in my heart there's only love and power and faith i have a sound mind amen i'm going to talk to us in a, a serious about the rapture but i'm going to i'm going to jump here and there different aspects of the rapture and what people believe and and what the word of god says because i want our mindset to be correct when it comes to the rapture the taking of the church we know we expect jesus is coming but we we must come to a place where we understand all of the scriptures around that jesus said some things the apostle paul said some things there's some things written in the book of revelation uh, there's some things uh, that you can find in daniel and it all talks about this time more or less where we are living in and the coming of the lord and the day of the lord and a lot of people get a lot of things confused okay there's a lot of different teaching out there and my aim with this kind of teaching is to just get our minds sorted you know so you can see which scripture fits in where and when you read for example uh, 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 Matthew 24 that you know what you're reading about so that you don't misplace it and uh, you know or put it or apply it rather in a place where it uh, or a time frame where it should not be now the rapture of the church by now you should know that the word rapture does not occur in the bible uh, it is a word coined to just describe what the bible says it's a catching away a taking away now that taking away from the earth that action uh, to better understand what everybody was talking about they just coined the, the, the word rapture it's going to be taken taken away so don't be thrown by this word because there's a lot of people coming up with say ah the rapture is not even in the bible and da, 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 da. but just so that you can know why we talk about the rapture it is to describe an event where the church will be taken from the earth to meet the lord in the air that whole process uh, that will most probably take place in a twinkling of an eye is called the rapture are we together do we know what the rapture is so the rapture is a fact you cannot uh, get around that you cannot get away from it it is going to happen and um, jesus himself gave the promise to the disciples and this promise through the ages was delivered to us uh, even today this promise is valid and for us Yo, my computer doing another under dinger. Let's go to John chapter 14. You know this very well. John chapter 14, the whole of, of this chapter, it's such a favorite uh, portion of scripture to me personally. Now listen to this. Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. We are living in times that your heart can easily be troubled. Let not fear enter because of what you see, because of the things that are coming. He says, let not your heart be troubled. That's a command, isn't it? It's not a suggestion. It is a command. He says, you believe in God. How many of you believe in God? I should hope everyone sitting here believes in God. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Now listen to this. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Now, where is he going to prepare this place? 
in heaven. Where? In his father's house. There's many mansions and he's going to prepare a place for us there. He says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. This is very important to understand what he's saying here. I will come again. Because there is the coming again of Jesus to take the church to remove the church from the face of the earth so that the church can be with him in his father's house. But there's also the day of the Lord and uh, uh, the return of the Lord when he will come with the armies of heaven against the Antichrist. But when he uses the words, I will come again, that come again always speaks about the rapture. The removing of the church. And that you see very clearly uh, when he says... I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, where is he now? Amen. That where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. Just in case they wondered, where is this? He was just saying to them, well, I'm going there, and you know the way, and I'm the way. I'm the truth. So Jesus is coming back to take his church, to remove his church from the face of the earth so that we can be where he is. Always be therefore with, uh, with the Lord. That's what other scriptures also says. Now you can read 1 Corinthians 15 verse 23 and you can uh, read verse 51. Um, can we throw, throw that one up? Just uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 23. It really uh, uh, fills it in, talks a lot about the rapture, and, uh, uh, the resurrection and so forth. Uh, here he just talks uh, again about the rapture, each one in his own order, Christ the first fruits after those who are Christ at his coming. So there's going to be a great coming together. There's going to be a great reunion on that day because the dead in Christ will rise up. We who are alive at that time, we will join with them. We will have one joyous uh, uh, celebration. I don't know for how long it will be here on earth that we will just, hey, I haven't seen you for years, you know, and people coming out of the graves and looking their best and you look at your body and it's changed according to the word of God and, and that's a rejoicing. And uh, then all of a sudden we go up and we meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord, the scripture says. Now, I just wanted to share that to say this, that it is a fact. This, uh, uh, there are many other scriptures that bear out it is a fact. It is a definite something that's going to happen. And by the way, before the rapture happens, there's no prophetic word that still needs to be fulfilled. It can happen at any time. Okay, can happen at any time. So we are looking forward to that. I hope you are. Uh, the Bible even says in Thessalonians, we must comfort one another with these words. When it goes bad in this life and people get depressed and their hearts get burned, you say, you, we must say to one another, hey, don't worry. Uh, don't be concerned. Let fear get out because guess what? Jesus is on the way. He is coming. Be comforted. He is coming again. Now, what is the purpose for the rapture? This is what I want to get into for today. And uh, we're going to look at about nine, ten reasons for the rapture. Because they, they are those people, they have this thought pattern that uh, there they shouldn't be a rapture. The rapture is, is, is not going to happen because, and they have reasonings like, well, listen, the church has been persecuted from the beginning. Why would God let us escape what's coming? It's not an escaping 
of tribulation as such. It is an escaping of the rule of the Antichrist and during that time the wrath of God that is coming upon the face of the earth. Romans tell us that we are not destined for wrath. So it's an escaping of the end times of what is coming upon the earth because what's coming upon the earth has never happened in all of human history. The Bible even says if those days were not shortened, uh, you know, not even the, uh, the, 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 the chosen ones would be saved. I mean, it would be so severe. But God, in his love, has decided you are not going to go through that because Jesus paid the price for you. You are safe. You are forgiven. Uh, uh, we will experience normal tribulation and persecution. Uh, 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 like, it, like it has been always for the church. But when this time comes, you and I don't have to worry. We look up. He, Jesus even says, when you see these signs, when you see famines, when you see wars, when you see rumors of wars, when you see uprisings, what are we seeing even in our own country? Uprisings and all kinds of things. He says, don't let your heart be burdened. But no, look up. Your redemption draws near. Okay? So let us look at some of the reasons why the rapture must take place. Number one, obviously, to receive the saints unto himself. Jesus wants you and me with him. Jesus wants companionship. He, we are his bride. Uh, 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 not, not in a literal sense, but as a, uh, as, a, as a groom is with his wife, you want to be with one another. Isn't that so? So that you can be, and I can be with him. That again, you can refer to John 14, 1 to 3. It says it very plainly there. That it's because he wants to receive us unto himself. Ephesians 5, 27 says that he might present it, speaking about the church, to himself a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But that it should be holy and without blemish. Can you see that? That's the purpose for the rapture. So that Jesus can receive the church to himself, present it to himself as a bride almost, without spot and without wrinkle. That's why I say to you that Jesus is busy cleaning up the church. Therefore, you have the exposure of a lot of false prophets, a lot of false teachers, a lot of nonsense going on in the church. So there we have it in Ephesians. In Thessalonians 2 verse 1 says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord and by our gathering together unto Him. See again, he talks about our gathering unto Him. The rapture is so that we could be gathered to Himself. He wants to receive us to himself. Number two, the number two reason for the rapture is to resurrect the dead in Christ from among the wicked dead. Isn't that awesome? When he comes, all of the righteous, all of God's people will rise from the dead. The ungodly will stay in their graves until a thousand years later. And they will be damned forever. And so Paul even talks about it. He says that I can attain to this resurrection. Uh, and uh, <laughs> a wonderful thing is the day when Jesus comes and that trump sounds and the graves open. Guess who will be with us here on the earth? Paul, John, all of the apostles, they will be raised together with those who have died that we know. And we will see them. And they will not be there in their physical bodies with the Lord before us. We will all go together and we will meet the Lord in the air. And I believe they will be so excited to see how their labor of love in the gospel has in so many thousands of years delivered fruit. Amen. Because we are still the fruit of Christ and of the apostles. So um, it's to resurrect the dead in Christ. You can read there 1 uh, Corinthians 15 verse 21 to 23 is a good scripture. Talks all about it. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 51 to 58. Then again, 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 13 
to 17, but I want to read this one for us. Uh, Revelations 20, Revelations 20, verse 4 to 6. Listen to how he says it's good news. Revelations 20, verse 4 to 6. And I saw thrones, and they want to be among those that are taken over by the cares of this world. And I miss the rapture. Like that five foolish virgins that did not have oil in their lamps. So what, what, he's telling us, he's giving us the how-to. He says, watch and pray always. So be aware of what's happening. Sift out of your life anything that's not of value. And pray. Be in communication with him. Make sure that everything in your life is right. Ask Him to show you if there's things that are uh, offensive. And repent and get it out of your life. Make right with everybody. I've started doing that. I've contacted all my brothers that I haven't seen for, for a while. That didn't seem to want to talk to me and have a relationship with me. I said, you know, if I've done you anything wrong, we haven't had a relationship as it ought to be for a long time. Please forgive me. And that's, we must do that. We must get that right. And uh, then you release them. Uh, what everybody does with that, it's their problem. But as long as you make right with everyone. And you are in good standing with the Lord. Watch and pray always that you may be worthy. And then lastly, the rapture is coming to remove the hinderer of lawlessness. Remember now Jesus said you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. But if there's no light and no salt. Guess what takes over? Rottenness. Lawlessness. Corruption. And we already have a flood of corruption. But it cannot have its full cause yet. Because something hinders it from taking over. And 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 7 to 8 says, For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now lets or keeps it at bay will keep it or let it until he be taken out of the way. Then shall the wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So there's two things there. You can make it 9 and 10. Number one, to remove that which hinders the Antichrist from coming and the lawless one. And, and, and number two, the actual revealing of who the Antichrist is. Is it cannot be revealed until he who keeps his working at bay is removed. And who is the he? There's two strains of thoughts. Some believe it is the Holy Spirit, because the Bible says he, and we know that God the Father is he, Jesus is he, the Holy Spirit is he, and and so there's a strain of thought that thinks it is the Holy Spirit. But then you must remember that. We as the church, the body of Christ, is also seen as he. Although we are known also as the bride, the, 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 the bride part, it's just symbolic. It's just, it's not the same as a, as, a, as a natural man and woman get married. But he's using that because uh, even when he teaches on the marriage, Paul uses the, the relationship between uh, Christ and the church. Okay? But if you look at the church, the Bible says we are all members of one another and we are members of the body of Christ. And so that's the he that's here that must be removed. Because if there's no Christians that follow righteousness and that keep the corruption at bay, Evil will take over. And then obviously the other reason why it cannot be the Holy Spirit. As I've already said. The Holy Spirit is omnipresent. Number one. 
God the Father is omnipresent, God the Son is omnipresent, God the Holy Spirit is omnipresent, um, because they are outside of time, they live outside of time, they exist outside of time, um, that's why you can know the end from the beginning, but also the Holy Spirit needs to convict people still, and people will get born again. During the tribulation, multitudes will come to the Lord, especially from the Jewish nation. Multitudes will be saved, born again, filled with the Holy Spirit in that time. Many will lose their lives. Many will be beheaded. And they will also uh, be raised and we will see them in heaven. Amen. So, uh, I hope that it helps you as far as why there should be or is going to be a rapture. We will take it in, in other days. We will talk a, a lot more about this, but we'll take other aspects of the rapture. For example, uh, what are the qualifications to go in the rapture? How can I be sure that I will go in the rapture? And um, we'll talk maybe on some other end time things as well later on.